friends. Welcome back to Frosty Eye Candy. Now, unfortunately, I can't jump straight in and show you the dried results because this piece has already been snapped up by a lovely person and that lovely person is Britt from Britt Clayton Designs. Hi there, Britt. Thank you so much for your support. I highly suggest you check out Britt Clayton Designs. She's a wonderful artist and also a wonderful human. So, that being said, I can certainly run through the colours I made it with. So the first colour we're putting down, my friends, it's Ore by this little piggy. There we go. It's a beautiful, bright gold colour and is absolutely fantastic and great when you use it first as a base because having this shine and shimmer through your other colours that you put on top, the other transparents and opaques, it's really going to make for a great pour. So that's the Ore and we've got a Piggy paint, piggy, piggy, paint, paint, paint. <laughs> Sister lineup going on right here. Now the next paint we're going to use is Liquitex. And this is the soft, uh, yes, yeah, soft body acrylic. And this is the Prism Violet. And then you can see it's transparent there by the little square that isn't filled in. And people say, well, that's not a tube paint. It's not in a tube. Well, what we mean by a tube paint is basically anything else that you've used, any other kind of paint that you didn't mix up. So it's not a uh, pigment or something like that. So any other kind of paint that isn't a pigment will be classed as a tube paint. Okay, guys? So the next pigment we're putting down, the next color, it's this beautiful, glorious purple from, again, this little piggy, and this one is called Funk. This is part of the, um, uh, part of the neon range and is slightly uh, UV reactive. So. Again, works really great in a pour when you get it under black light. The next piggy we're putting down, and I'm gonna give you the one in three chance again, my friends. Those that know me well know that I have a one in three chance of guessing that this little piggy, this one, is Twinkle. Yes, there you go. As you can see, my little Twinkle piggy is almost empty, but don't worry, I bought two. <laughs> So the next paint we're putting down, friends, is this one. It's the Liquitex uh, Soft Body. No, this is the acrylic gouache. Gouache, there we go. Uh, and this is the fluorescent opera pink. And as you can see, the little square is half filled in with a triangle, meaning it is semi-opaque. Now the last paint we're putting down, my friends, and that's it, is gonna be this one here. This is uh, by Golden, and this is the Thalo Light Blue. Here we go, and it is totally opaque, as you can see by the filled in square. So that's uh, that's our colours. The last one, our cell activator, is usual, the usual Australian Floetrol Amsterdam paint, and we're using Prussian blue. Okay then, my friends, that's it. We're going to get the camera pointing down. I'm going to zip it, and we're going to get on with painting, okay? So the first thing I should mention is this is a 13-inch canvas obviously it's a round uh, and a, a trick with canvas if uh, you find your canvas is a little saggy when you go to actually paint on it a good trip tip and trick is to lightly mist the back with water allow that to dry and that should tighten your canvas up beautifully so the first color we're putting down here friends is the ore by this little piggy as you can see it's a fantastic beautifully bright shimmery gold and works particularly well when used first in the pour because that will be your background as such to the other colors and it's really glorious to watch it shimmering through the other transparent and opaque paints that you lay on top of it so this next one this is the liquitex prism violet our tube paint and this one is transparent And as you can see, I'm laying it down kind of thinly, guys, not completely covering the color before. So we hopefully get some nice fades between them. Now this one is back to the uh, this little piggy, and this one's called Funk. Glorious purple color. And as I've mentioned before, it is black light reactive. So if you'd get some UV light on one of these pictures, they really do show you a whole different piece. So the next color we're putting down here, friends, this is the Twinkle by this little piggy. It's an interference pigment, so it looks white and kind of dries slightly white, but 
when you view the piece at a 45 degree angle to the light source you're looking at it at, it'll flash this beautiful, beautiful blue color one way, and then on the other 45, a beautiful kind of violet. So this color that we're putting down, glorious contrast to the ones that we've already put down. And this is the Liquitex, uh, this is the uh, gouache, and it, the color is fluorescent opera pink. And we're just gonna be, yeah, a little more generous, just put a little more down. But remember guys, when we're doing a bloom, or when I'm doing a bloom, I always put slightly less down of each color as we go along because we don't want the last colors to overtake the whole piece. Now this one is the uh, golden, the phthalo light blue. And this one is the opaque. And it's gonna make a nice base together with the uh, gouache, the fluorescent pink, for our cell activator to sit on and not sink so quickly. And the cell activator here is the Amsterdam standard acrylic. And this is the Prussian blue. Always remember to put enough cell activator down when we're doing a larger piece, guys, because we want to try and cover everywhere. And as this video, as for me, as for you, it's a learning video, I could have put slightly down, a little more color maybe, and a little more of the CA. Not the worst bloom ever that I have done. <laughs> And then we go for a nice close-up. You can see those cells just starting to form in the middle as the cell activator sinks. And while we wait for it to do that, I'm just gonna blow out the edges of these petals a little more, just to make a little more interest and detail to the edge of the bloom. And excuse the back of my head while I give the cell activator in the middle a last little help with that little blow. So now, friends, it's time for some modification. And we're gonna stay nice in the close-up for this so you can see exactly what I do and how I do it. But just grabbing and wringing nice little areas of the edge of the petals that you want to ring and trying to avoid going through areas that you'd like to keep. So in for the last modification of the other side, friends. As you can see, we had the large petal just there. I went quite deeply into the bloom with the modification. Again, just adds more depth, detail, and interest. So when we go for the first spin, my friends, this is the anti-clockwise spin. We're staying with a nice closed up zoom so you can watch the bloom grow and also you can see how long and how fast I spin for. I've had a lot of people leave me lovely comments saying they greatly appreciate where I leave my videos in real time because it allows them to see exactly what I'm doing and for instance, how long and fast I spin for. But there we go, friends. You can see it's slightly one-sided. So I'm just going to pick the whole bloom up there and just kind of give it a little helping hand. Here we go but that also shows us the beautiful shimmers. Just a quick flash little preview of what's coming later. So in we go for the anti-clockwise spin. Again, in real time, spin this one just slightly faster than I did the first spin, but it's growing nicely and there's a nice close up of the center. Wow, very pretty, as long as you love purple. And who doesn't love purple? So in for the third and final spin, you can see that one. I really did spin slightly faster this time just to get the paint to move, meet the edge of the canvas, hopefully flow over the edges really nicely and give us some nice cells and detail. And here's a nice close up of the piece. Beautiful. I'm loving these candy striping and these fades of color around the edge of the bloom. And as you can see, I could have used slightly more cell activator and maybe had some more cells reaching out further into the bloom towards the edge. But just checking it for movement. 
looks pretty good. Put one more spin just for good measure. We can finally see the bloom really meet in the edge of the canvas and looking very pretty indeed, even if I say so myself. So this is looking good. I'm gonna show you a um, nice large wide shot of the shimmer. Go in nice and closely for the close up of the shimmer. Those piggies working so beautifully together and making a great picture. So thank you my friends. Please like, subscribe and share if you like what you see here and happy pouring.